Chapter 28, The Seven Tiers of Suns. When the 6,000 year period of creative meditation is completed, the substances will begin to condense. The first substance that condenses from the mind into existence is magnetism. So the first sun starts as a purely magnetic sun and remains that way for many billions of years. Now, the creation of the universe is a simply effortless process involving only the imagination, but the description of the process using words, written or spoken, is very difficult. The creation of all stars is sequential as already stated, with one star being initiated or set in place every 7,000 years. But before each star is set in its place, there is a larger process of coordination of all of the heavenly bodies that will coexist in a given region. Such regions are divided into seven tiers, like circles within circles. The first tier or smallest circle is a solar system such as ours and is made up of planets orbiting a sun. The second tier is made up of a group of solar systems revolving around a larger sun. These larger suns also form a group or family of suns that revolve around an even larger sun, forming a third tier. This pattern is repeated identically with each tier much larger than the one before up to the seventh tier. The seventh tier is a group of galaxies orbiting around what may be called a galactic sun for a lack of a better word. Therefore, there are seven tiers of classes of suns. Our sun is a first tier sun and all together with its companions such as Alpha Centauri, Sirius, the Pleiades and many others revolve around a much larger sun called a second tier or second class sun. The second class suns are created before the first class suns and the third class suns are created before the second class and so on up to the seventh tier sun, which is the largest and first to be created. But all the higher class suns remain as purely magnetic suns for a long time, even after the first class suns like ours have completely condensed and appear as orbs of light. Thus, the higher tier suns remain invisible and are known to modern scientists only by their gravitational effects. As stated before, these effects are not gravitational unless gravitational is redefined as magnetic. Because of the large size of these suns compared to the first class suns like our sun, their magnetic attraction is much stronger. And because they remain as purely magnetic suns for a long time without any light substance to make them visible, they're quite an enigma to modern scientists. They can detect the gravitational pull or magnetic attraction that it exerts on all neighboring space objects, even on light itself, yet they themselves remain invisible. For this reason, they are called black holes. Black holes. They're called black holes because modern instruments cannot detect them, but can detect only their physical effects on surrounding bodies, including the effects they have on light. They exist in deep blackness because they have not yet formed an electrical and light substance. In addition, there's no ether around them for light to travel. So when light waves enter their region, the light appears to be swallowed into an abyss and disappears. It becomes invisible due to the lack of ether. Light can only travel in ether or space. Without it, the movement of light is inhibited and the light waves eventually disintegrate and become one with the magnetic substance. Thus, these magnetic suns form a region around themselves of pure blackness, where only their magnetic presence exists. There th therefore, they appear to the telescope as black holes. That is the first type of black hole. The second type is formed when a regular sun or group of suns have reached the end of their allotted time of existence as light orbs. They then evaporate and their light, ether, and electrical substances revert back to magnetic substance. Such suns, when they become purely magnetic suns, usually join together with others in their vicinity and form a large and visible magnetic body, though not as large as the higher tier suns. They form a second type of black hole for the same reason. Those that do not join with others form a smaller black hole still. Other suns die differently, not by reverting to a higher substance, but by condensing from further from light orbs and becoming gas orbs, 
somewhat like the planet Jupiter, but much larger. If they collapse further, they go from the gaseous stage and actually become giant solid planets. Because of their intense magnetic quality, they are not the type of planets suitable for habitation. When they're detected by modern instruments, they're called black or red or white dwarf suns, depending on their color. <laughs>